Long ago, there lived a knight named Sir William. One day, William learned that a princess had been captured by a dragon, so he immediately ran to the rescue, battling the dragon and ultimately giving his life to slay the beast and save the princess. For this, he is remembered as a noble and brave knight. Noble because he acted selflessly to save another person, and brave because he faced his fears and acted at great personal risk to himself. But there's another key reason we consider him noble and brave, and that's that, when facing the dragon, he was being forced to confront an unfortunate reality that was outside his control. The princess had already been captured by the time William was made aware of the situation, and he had to choose between his safety and her rescue. This is the case in any coherent tale of heroism. The hero must be pushed into action by an outside force that limits his or her options. In other words, the hero's deeds must not only be courageous and sacrificial, but necessary. Otherwise, the narrative just falls apart. For example, if William were a wizard who chose to summon the dragon and place it near the princess, and then rode in to save her instead of just making the dragon disappear again, then we would not consider him noble and brave. Instead, we would think he was reckless and foolish. Reckless because he put the princess in needless danger and foolish because he died facing an unnecessary obstacle of his own contrivance. What's more, we would find the whole story about him to be absurd. Perhaps I'm belaboring an obvious point, but this is a concept Christians need to understand. If you're a believer, then you probably see God as a benevolent deity who assumed human form and died to save us. This might make you feel good because it lets you dwell on the magnitude of his sacrifice and of his love for you. However, to maintain this idea, you must view this part of the story in isolation, because it lets you imagine that one day, God just found us dangling over hell and had no choice but to swoop in and rescue us. But if you step back and look at the big picture, it quickly becomes clear that this was not the case. God was not forced to choose between our life and his. He did not have to die to save us. In fact, we were in no danger whatsoever until God manufactured the very situation that he then had to save us from. Rather than finding us dangling over hell, he started with a situation where everything was perfectly fine, but then chose to create hell and dangle us over it. This is weird instead of heartwarming, which is why you compartmentalize your religion into different feelings and experience each one separately at different times. Sometimes you like to feel awe at the fact that God is all-powerful and created everything, including all the rules for how the universe works. Other times, you like to feel warm and fuzzy about the fact that God so tragically and heroically sacrificed himself. Yet you probably know that these ideas make no sense in light of each other, which is why you only fully consider one at a time. There's no such thing as a tragic and heroic sacrifice if God created and controlled the whole situation from the start. God was not noble and brave for rescuing us. He was reckless and foolish. Reckless for needlessly subjecting us to the danger of hell and foolish because he died facing an unnecessary obstacle of his own contrivance. What's more, we should find this story about him to be absurd. If you wouldn't find it acceptable for William to summon a dragon before sacrificing himself to save a princess, then you should not find it acceptable for God to create hell before sacrificing himself to save us from it. And on a side note, please don't try arguing that God's options were limited when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, or that this event somehow magically conjured hell and forced God to find some way to overcome it. If God was all-powerful and designed everything, then he created the tree of knowledge and authored the consequences of humans eating from it. He and he alone decided that this one act would stain the entire human race, that everybody with that stain would go to hell, and that the only way around this problem was his own death. By offering such an excuse, you've only managed to create a longer, more complicated path to the same stupid destination.